So I watched a stream the other day with Steve Franson, and he was talking about a group of modern day witch types. And it concludes with him getting very angry about the degeneration of American society. He talks about the lack of ponds because of how the local government just destroys everything. And understandably so. But in the midst of watching Steve Franson, and I've observed this from a lot of his content and from other people in the America First lot, it really struck me how there's always this comparison to the 1950s, this appeal to a 1950s kind of lifestyle, and understandably so. We are a generation of orphans. How many families have been broken by the laissez-faire attitude towards morality that we've seen? How many children suffer without fathers or without mothers? How many are ground down by the increasing inequality in wages. We can't even afford our own houses in Britain. In America, it's feasible, to a certain extent. But over here, it's $300,000 for an average house, to give you an idea. And even higher in many places. And what we need to do is ask ourselves how we got here. How is it that 50% of young children don't have both their parents? How is it? How is it that there are all of these people addicted to drugs? How is it that there are all of these perverts around in the streets? How is it that the school systems require people to be metal detected to make sure they're not going to shoot the place up? And I'll tell you precisely why, and nobody is going to like the answer. It's because man is incorrectably broken. When man bit into the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he was irreparably broken. At least by human hands, he became utterly imperfect. The difference is, is that in the 1950s, people realised this. And so they mitigated. They mitigated their way of life so that they could try to repair this way of being to the end of serving Christ. Nowadays, they believe that this obvious human frailty does not exist. They believe that there is no original sin, but there is original divinity. When once man knelt to respect God, to respect his parents, to respect his elders, and to respect those he worked for, now they don't. The only being that any of these pagan types really worship is themselves. They believe that they are the arbiters of what is good. They believe they are the arbiters of what is bad. And hence, we have this strange subjectivism, this judge not, when reality could not be further from the truth. Man does not have the divine spark necessary to decide what is good and bad. We are irreparably broken. God does. And likewise, our modern psychological practices by and large assume this. Whereas once, a person who was struggling with mental problems would go to a monk or a priest and talk about them, and the priest and the monk, with decades of experience, would sit them down and talk them through the habits that they were in, and instruct them on how to overcome them. Now we have these therapists. These therapists who will often exacerbate the problem so they can get more money out of the poor person in the chair. How many people have really graduated from sitting in the therapist's chair when they have got so many of these problems? I can tell you it isn't many. Now, how many have succeeded with the priest and with the monk? Well, we can see it testament in the societies that came before these methods. They were stable. There were stable families. Parents had children. Children knew their parents. There was beauty everywhere. Whereas now, what do we have? We have glass and steel monstrosities, broken families, SSRIs. And all because the men of the past, the churchmen, the monks, they understood how man works in a more effective way than the likes of Jung or the likes of Freud. Now, Steve Franson and America First, they realised this. They realised that there is a really serious problem and that the only way that's going to fix it is Christ. However, being primarily political, they don't seem to make it clear that these oligarchs, 
These leaders who are doing these horrendous things, be it raising taxes or other insane things, they ultimately came from the American people, be they very rich or not. And so, we have a far greater task on our hands than merely changing the government. We have to change the people as well, because the government is ultimately from the people. And the way that we're going to do that is through practicing Christianity. Now, I don't think I need to tell anybody this, but Christianity is not something that you practice on Sundays and then act like a capitalist every other day of the week. It isn't. It is something that permeates every moment, of every second, of every minute, of every hour, of every day. And so, we must live Christian lives. If we want our ponds back, if we want our children to have parents, we must live this reality. And this is something that I very rarely see. Now, going to church is a good start, and many people have done it, but there needs to be a conscious development among Christian people online, and among particularly those who are very politically involved, towards a daily spiritual practice. Do you want the strength to be able to walk into Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders or Joe Biden's office, look him right in the eye and tell him that this isn't going to go on? Well, I can give you two examples of people who have reached this. Moses, when he opposed Pharaoh in Exodus. And one text that I'd recommend everybody read after this video, break out your Bible and go to 1 Kings chapter 17 and read until the end of chapter 22. That is the story of Elijah, a man who faced down a reprobate king. Now, how did they achieve this? How did they get rid of the degeneracy in their societies? How did they face these men down? They faced them down through prayer. Prayer makes a man just, and just men are strong. Many of you want to stare down the evil in the society and not blink. You want to be able to stand up to this without fear. And there is one way that you will do that, and that is through prayer. Men of prayer are the strongest, most masculine men to ever live. Two examples. Moses, a man who rescued his people by God's assistance and faced down Pharaoh, who was a great king. Likewise, Elijah, a man who stood up to a reprobate king and told him exactly how things were going to go and wiped out the enemies that were corrupting his homeland. 1 Kings chapter 17 through chapter 22, if you want to read about that. These two heroes were men of prayer primarily. Elijah spent 40 years in the desert disciplining himself, overcoming that original sin that I mentioned earlier on by the power of God through his ability to pray. And likewise Moses, spending decades in the deserts of the Sinai, fighting against his imperfections as well. And you can do exactly the same thing, not to the level of Moses necessarily, but any amount will discipline you make you better able to follow Christ's calling, and also make you better able to stand up for justice. Because justice is what makes a great man. The first and oldest way to obtain this kind of justice and strength is through the chanting and saying of Psalms. Every Bible has the book of Psalms. And online, and through something called the Divine Office, you can find the Psalms to say on a particular day, and therefore build yourself up. I'm telling you, this is an incredibly effective way of building you up. The second way is to pray the rosary. Now, I'm sure that those who have been in Catholic circles for any length of time will have heard of this, and you can go onto my other channel, Renaissance Man, for videos on this. This simple 20-minute set of beads will build you in ways that you cannot possibly imagine. It has certainly changed my life for the better. And finally... On top of all of these things, there is spiritual reading. Now, I'm going to assume that almost all of you have a Bible. So you can use that, you can repeat a particular passage four times and then just sit and think about it. That is itself a form of prayer, called mental prayer. And it is, like the others, especially effective. It's extremely effective. And three books that provide similar things in a more pointed way because you may not know your way around the scriptures. 
The first is The Preparation for Death by St. Alphonsus Liguri. And this is very pointed, and it lets you know of where you are going when you die, how to die a good death, and such things. The second is the philokalia, or love of beauty. And this provides the information that the first monks lived off of. Those people who imitated Elijah and imitated St. John the Baptist. And finally, the sayings of the Desert Fathers, which are a collection of stories from these same men that recount their struggle against their own fallen natures. Now, on top of this, you need to be reading scripture daily. The Bible built the countries that you are in. The Bible's stories drove men to leap from ships without any siege equipment and take towns in the Holy Land. It built Elijah. It built up the people who followed Christ. And so we ought to read what they are saying. Now, one problem that people have is they don't know where to start. So I'm going to give you a narrative that gives you the whole story. So you can just read it front to back. And I will include this in the description with everything else. You start with Genesis, move on to Exodus, then Numbers, Joshua, Judges, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, Ezra, Nehemiah. If you have a Catholic Bible, you will want to read 1st Maccabees, then the Gospel of Luke, and then Acts. After this, I recommend reading very strongly the Gospel of John, Ecclesiastes, Job, and the Song of Songs. Finally, you cannot go this alone. You need a church. You need a community. So after this lockdown is over, go to your local Catholic church and be baptised or confirmed. You're going to need these people because no man is an island, and Christ gives his graces through his church. In the meantime, there are many Discord servers that you can go and join. The Daily Brap server, and I'm going to link another one in the description, where we talk about the texts that I've just described, and do talks on them. So, I hope you found this useful. I'd really appreciate a response from Steve Franson if he sees this, or from anybody else who finds this useful. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope this has helped.